everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today I wanted to show you something that I think is really, really cool. And in a prior unpackaging or unboxing, I actually opened up Hour of the Huntress, which is all about a character called Jenny Barnes within the world of Arkham Horror. Now, what's really cool about these novels off the cuff, I want to let you guys know about, is they have direct ties into Arkham Horror, the card game, which is why they're being showcased here on the channel, and I'm showing them here as a featured product because I love these things and I'm collecting every single one of them as they continue to enhance the world that I already love. Um, I've been into the Arkham Horror world for quite some time and always enjoyed it and it really does enhance the story of the game when you have uh, some actual backstories on the characters to read prior to going in and that's going to kind of push us into why I like them so much and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. First off, I recently did a top 10 solo card game list. You can go check that out if you want. It's this Arkham Horror the Card Game actually uh, took the top spot and uh, I believe is the top spot in the solo gaming realm right now based on a, a little bit of its newness to the world as well as its um, relative ease to uh, to newcomers to the hobby or as well as experienced players of giving them something a little bit different that they're not uh, as used to with the story building element of the characters throughout the, the different uh, scenarios that you go through as well as the quick deck building elements that they've implemented which I think are an enhancement to Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings being a very heavy 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 deck building game um, so if you're looking for a heavy deck building game um, and I actually have Lord of the Rings and its entire collection except for maybe just a couple expansions that have recently released I love it but it is deep and does consume quite a bit of time as you go through it because you need to tinker with each of your decks in order to create them to beat a scenario. You're not playing a character to mold its story, you're creating a deck to simply beat a scenario. So the deck building portion is extremely important in that game. So you'll be sometimes putting more time into uh, not playing the game and actually deck building than you will actually playing through scenarios. So there's a kind of a 50-50 there where some people like that, some people don't. I like it, but I think recently Arkham Horror has done a wonderful job of putting it more into like an 80 to 20% camp where 80% of the time you're playing and 20% of the time you're deck building and upgrading, which I like much, much more because I want to get games to the table and play them. Uh, so this right here, what this is you're seeing are these novels that will essentially enhance the card game. And you might be like, how the heck is that possible if you're not familiar with the world? But what Fantasy Flight is doing is taking each individual character, and there's a number of them, I think there's 25 plus now, and I think even more will likely come in the future, but there's different backstory and characters, uh, novels for each of the characters in the world. So for instance, Roland Banks uh, right here is one of the novels, and that comes from the core set. So you're able to go ahead now and pick up his backstory, give it a read, and this is what's so cool about these novels. You can read this book now, get an idea as to his backstory, feel much more attached to the character, and then jump into what Arkham Horror the card game really is strongest at, which is bringing that, the, the character deck into the game and feeling like you're actually playing a, a character with uh, its personality traits, afflictions, all that stuff jived into one deck. Um, that's one of the strongest reasons Arkham Portal the card game is as popular as it is, is because of that narrative and because of that connection with the person you're actually playing. And I think these novels enhance that to the next level because you can now read these novels before going in or even during going in to get even more backstory on why a character behaves or is the way they are. And that's awesome. So we've got a whole bunch of characters here. This one is Jenny Barnes and was the first one that was ever released from the novels. And I did an actual unpacking of this one and showed you guys that. So if you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. I won't be talking about that one here. We'll be focusing on these three. But essentially, this is Jenny Barnes. This is Roland Banks. This is Norman Withers. And this is uh, Kathleen, Kat, uh, Carolyn Fern, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So there's, uh, there's four here in front of you. One of them is coming out for Silas, I believe, who's a sailor. And that's the next one that's supposed to be coming out and is currently on pre-order, I believe. But I will definitely be picking all these up because I love being able to go into a game with some backstory. I love story in games, and this is just going to make the games better. The coolest part about it, too, is you're not only getting a uh, book, but inside of these things, you're also going to be getting some exclusive cards. That's right. So we're going to go through each of these books one by one. I'm going to show you the cards that are inside of them. I'm also going to show you a little bit of what's going on inside, maybe some of the artwork, and then we'll skim through the pages. And just give you an idea as to what you can expect if you want to pick them up. 
So just before we jump into the very first book that I want to talk about, we're actually going to talk about an even bigger book. And this is one that I've had and it's been out for a little bit longer. And it's called The Investigators of Arkham uh, Horror. And you guys can actually pick this one up in stores right now. It's much thicker uh, than a typical book. However, it has short stories on each of the individual investigators. So prior to these novels coming out, which would give you a much fuller, richer, deeper experience uh, into learning about the character, this gives you more of a high level short story on each of the investigators. So if you don't want to wait for all of these to release and you just want something to quickly read before you go in and use a character during the card game, this is definitely, uh, in my opinion, a must-buy if you like the series, the theme, and everything. Pick this up because inside of this book, you're going to find actual, like I mentioned, short stories for all the different characters. And they're going to last, you know, a certain number of pages. So for instance, Wendy Adams here has some artwork, has the short story on the side. It runs usually two or three pages. And they're themed for the character. So you get a really cool vibe. Now this William York, it's all about kind of the graveyard, the grave digger, so it's very dark and gloomy um, and things like that. But each character has its own short story, very quick and easy to read, and won't take up a lot of your time if you're not one of those people who don't like, uh, or if you don't like reading novels. If you do like reading novels, or do like reading in general, then these are going to be right up your alley because they're going to enhance that story even more so and give you more to read and learn. And I think that's really, really cool. So without further ado, let's go ahead and rip into the packaging for this one. This one's all about Roland Banks. So inside of this is obviously not only the book itself, but those exclusive cards. So the cool thing about it is it's very tempting for a collector of Arkham Horror to get pulled into this because of the fact that even if you don't want to read the book or and things like that, the cards inside it are going to give you things that you can't get anywhere else. You're going to get exclusive items that are meant for the character. And that's what's really cool. So this one here, for instance, being Roland Burke, uh, Roland Banks, sorry. Uh, this is called The Dirge of Reason. So there's a different uh, author for every single book so far. Don't know if that'll change or if they'll start revolving. Uh, there goes one of my books on the ground. Uh, this one here is, I'll go ahead and read this backstory a little bit so you can understand it, but it says, Lake House, destroyed 38 dead, case unknown. Federal agent Roland Banks has always done things by the book. It was the only way to avoid being dragged into the mire of corruption and quid pro quo that is government in prohibition America. But when Agent Banks busts the wrong bootlegging operation in Backwoods, Virginia, his punishment is a bizarre assignment near Arkham, Massachusetts. It is clear from the outset of his investigation that Arkham keeps its secrets close and Roland isn't growing or isn't going to break open his case if he sticks to SOP. But his agent's handbook has nothing to say regarding ancient myths and wrathful gods. As the mystery and chaos surrounding the assignment threaten to un unravel Roland, he must decide how much he's willing to risk to uncover and confront the truth. And there's the artwork on the back there as well. Pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and open this up, see what's inside. I don't know where the cards... There they are. So at the very back of the book, it looks like that's where they kind of hide the cards. So what's really cool about this, I'm going to show you guys these cards right away. The alternate art character card is really interesting. It's very different from the 3D-ish tone or drawing one. I shouldn't say 3D, but I guess it kind of looks 3D that you get in a typical core box for Roland Banks. This one looks more cartoonish and hand-drawn, uh, but I really like it because it just, I don't know, it just adds something different to the game. So that's really, really cool. Uh, and if I play with him in the future, I'll definitely be using that card as well. So, of course, you got the grayscale side as well as, and I'll give you a close-up of that. If I can actually get that to focus. There we go. So, there's the grayscale side and then the colored side. We've also got the Dirge of Reason. So, or, so this is going to talk about the actual book itself. It tells you how many cards it includes. It says an alternate art version of the Investigator. We just saw that. Um... A new signature card and a new signature weakness, which are optional replacements for his typical signature cards. This is where it's cool because you're going to get weaknesses that are specific to the story you're reading to then add them into the card game and play with that weakness and it might come up, which is so awesome that you can read a book, then start to play a campaign and actually you know, have that affliction or that problem or that issue that he, the character is dealing with appear inside the campaign and start to harm you. And I think that's such a cool way to implement this it's just fantastic so uh, anyway there's that it's going to talk about those two cards and it says new cards including this pack level player who does not already own Roland Banks to build a Roland Banks deck using Mysteries Unsolved so you can even technically buy these books to actually add characters in right away because technically all you need is exactly this you need the art you know this card here which you don't technically need if you have miniatures for other Arkham Horror games but you need this which is an actual character card and you get that here 
So again, this is the alternative one here. I'm not 100% sure how, uh, what this, how this compares, I should say, to his original one. I think those stats are the same. There might be a difference here in some of the stats. I could be wrong, or it's just alternative art. Um, on the back here, again, you've got some deck size, deck building options, and deck building requirements. This, maybe this is where it varies. I'll have to double check my prior one to see if it's any difference. But again, very cool. Uh, we've got, oh, this is really cool. So this is a Mysteries Remain card, an Insight card. So this is one of the one of the special cards I guess you can add in. It says, Roland Banks deck only. It's a replacement, fast, play only during your turn. Either place one clue from the token bank on your location or discover one clue at your location. Remove Mysteries Remain from the game. So that's a very powerful Insight card. And uh, wow, that's really good, a nice event card. Here is the card that relates right to the book itself, and this is the coolest thing ever. This is what I really love about these books, is the fact that they're bringing in uh, things that the character is dealing with inside the story that you're going to read. That's so awesome. The artwork is fantastic and obviously matches the book, to remind you. You've got a weakness here. The Madness is Roland Banks deck only. It's a replacement. Uh, Revelation, place two of your clues on your location. If you cannot, place all of your clues on your location. Take one horror and shuffle the Dirge of Reason back into your deck. Wow. So that's a weakness that just keeps on coming back to hurt you if you cannot get those clues onto the specific card it asks for, which is the location card. If you can't do it, it just keeps on revolving and causing you pain and grief as the madness continues to come back to you. Very cool. So those are the specific cards that come inside of this book, or the exclusive ones. Inside the actual book itself, again, it's a hardcover on the outside. And uh, these aren't, I think these are, they're not bound, uh, they're bound with uh, glue, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, there's a little bit of the Fed. Of course, he's part of the Fed, so there's a little bit of reading at the beginning. You've got your typical beginning of a book, title, things like that. And then you're moving right in here to the Welcome to Arkham page. So from here on in, you're talking all of the wonderful storyline for Roland Banks. And so the book reads like this. This is the kind of font, the size of the font to give you a good idea as to what you're looking at. Um, this is the eighth page of the book. This is gonna run all the way to, I guess the art at the back also counts, definitely, I think. But in terms of story, it stops around one page back from this. 95, so 95 pages. That's a solid story. Um, and of course, it also has artwork that's really cool, specific to whatever the actual story's about. And this is what's really interesting. So you can go to the back, and this is similar to what was in that uh, Investigators of Arkham book I showed, but you've got yourself like pages that are actual like little letters you can read that were maybe sent from Roland or uh, you know to Roland, things like that that enhance the story, give you a little bit of background, some paperwork that Roland might have been dealing with, some letters again, things like that. Just more stuff to enhance the story, Department of Justice, this is the... Uh, sheriff's or the county sheriff's office like so cool so cool I love I love when they do stuff like this it just makes the game this is what really makes it for me now again when I'm comparing Lord of the Rings to Arkham Horror the card game Lord of the Rings has such a, a massive universe with all the books that are out for it, the Hobbit and the trilogy and everything else and um, you know there's tons to go off of and I think this is what's giving Arkham Horror some serious backing now because Arkham Horror is or this whole world in general is up in, uh, to interpretation based on H.P. Lovecraft's writings So there's many different ways people can go with it in terms of the logic and the thinking behind it And I just like the idea that I can just go ahead and pick up a book read about a specific character in this story they were impacted by the madnesses that they dealt with and then bring that into a game I cannot tell you how cool that is so this is just one of the books called The Dirge of Reason, so we've just successfully unpacked that one. Next up, we're going to unpack uh, Norman Withers, Ire of the Void. All right, and next up we have Ire of the Void, and this one is all about Norman Withers. So we're gonna jump right into this and take a look on the inside to see what kind of exclusive cards we get for Arkham Horror, the card game. Here's the artwork for the book itself, which is fantastic. Again, different author than the other uh, authors before it, so Richard Lee Byers. And uh, again, on the back of the book here, we'll just do a quick read of the summary of what exactly is happening in this story. But first, before we do that, I'll rip off the plastic wrap to reduce some of the glare for you guys. So we're unboxing this, but more so just unpacking it more than anything else. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm just gonna make a quick cut here off camera. And then we will talk a little bit about what's inside of this book. I'm excited to dive into this because Norman Withers is one of my favorite char characters from the Arkham Horror series, among a few others. This guy is pretty cool. So let's see 
what he has. I'm really interested in all of the uh, unique cards that come in these particular books that are added into the Arkham Horror of the Card Game. It's really interesting to see what they've added. And uh, here is a nice uh, less glare than normal here. So now you're seeing the book full, title page at least. And on the back, there's the artwork. So science cannot explain the vanishing physicist. Nobody believes him, and why should they? How could six stars vanish from sight all at once, never to reappear? Astronomer and Miskatonic University professor Norman Withers had all but given up on regaining his colleague's esteem when a protege of the renowned Albert Einstein comes to speak on campus. The visiting physicist with unsettling theories about the curvature of space-time may hold the key to helping Norman explain the phenomenon of the vanishing stars. But when Norman agrees to assist the physicist with his own experimental conundrums, they find themselves no longer the seekers of knowledge, but those sought after. What creatures lurk in the angles of time, and how can two men of science stand up to the beings that defy the laws of reality? So that is the stage set for Ire of the Void. We're going to go ahead and open this up. I'll show you guys at the very back of the book. That's where they always hide the exclusive cards for this particular book. And there you have it. So there's Norman Withers, an alternative art. So first off, we'll just crack into this. I want to show you exactly what the cards look like. So it should be pretty cool. I'll show you the artwork first. So this is the first card. This is your alternative art character card that can actually be used during gameplay in Arkham Horror the card game. And then of course the inactive side which is a grayscale version of the exact same art. And next up is a card which explains the cards that have been added into this particular pack. So it's got a special preview as I just mentioned for the alternative art. New signature card and new signature weakness, which I'm excited to check out. Again, these signature cards uh, relate to the story. So that's what's really cool, as I mentioned before. So here is the character card that is uh, exclusive to this book. So there's the stats and everything else, the player powers and abilities, uh, Miskatonic keyword. And if I flip this over to the opposite side, we've got the classic deck building uh, reference information for not only the size, but the options for him, deck building requirements, as long as a little blurb and some flavor text for him as well. He's an astronomer, and uh, let's take a look at his exclusive cards. These are the ones that are really exciting is the stuff that gets added in. So this one's called uh, Ire of the Void, of course, or Ire Ear of the Void. I could be saying that wrong, so if I'm saying that wrong, someone let me know. Uh, split the Angle is the card, it's an asset, and uh, Oh, it does have a wild symbol, that's good. Spell, Norman Withers deck only, replacement, uh, reveal the top card of the encounter deck. So this is a way to find out essentially what's coming in the encounter deck, which just sounds fantastic. Uh, and then exhaust, split the angle and discard the top card of your deck, discard the top card of the encounter deck. Oh, so you're basically hurting yourself a little bit to then kind of, you know, hurt the encounter deck or potentially evade or or bypass something nasty that's coming from that. So that's a kind of a cool card, I like that. So interesting ability. And then this one here is an enemy, and this is actually pretty nasty because, uh, well, it's a vengeful hound. So this is a weakness for Norman Withers, which obviously will tie itself into the story. Uh, but this particular card here is actually a monster. I don't think I've seen, or an enemy. I don't think I've seen that with the exclusive cards just yet. So this is the character that will show up and be bothering him. Um, and says, uh, on those rare occasions when a man escapes the hounds, he doesn't always stay escaped. Sooner or later, they are up. Uh, they are apt to come after him. And uh, that's strictly, or they can even see the text are straight from the book, which is cool. And uh, it's got a prey, so it's actually coming. This one's actually coming to play, and of course, is preying on Norman Withers and has the stats above. Something to deal with as a weakness card that can be added into the game. Pretty cool. So those are awesome. Can't wait to add that in when I play with Norman. That'll be cool in his deck. So let's go ahead and take a look at the book real quick. I'll skim over kind of uh, what is inside of this one. Again, as per normal, bound uh, normally. Uh, and we'll go ahead and open this up. So there you go. And we've got two black pages, lots of black pages. Uh, here we go. So the first page is the astronomer. It seems there's a little blurb for every single book that maybe just describes uh, a little bit of the start of the story as well as the character. So kind of a little prelude. Uh, then it jumps right into the title page and the name of the book. Again, Fantasy Flight Games creating this. Part one is called The Barn and goes from here. So I'm not going to obviously spoil too much, but it uh, looks like it goes from first page all the way to page number in terms of the story all the way to page 92. So it's a solid, it's, solid, it's almost the same in length as the last book we looked at. 
We got the about the author on the back, so you can find a little bit more about the person that wrote it and what they have actually done in the past. Things so that's really cool because each author so far has been different, as I mentioned. So it's kind of cool to see what they've been up to in different uh, parts of the gaming industry and other books that they've uh, written. Of course, you've got these, which are the coolest thing ever, which are the, the little uh, full photographic pages that allow you to kind of see up close and, and personal notes that were actually from Norman Withers, uh, maybe things that he scratched down when he had been reading newspaper clippings, that type of thing. And uh, you can see here, like, Farmer Vanishes, Schoolboys Are Missing, There's a Murder, of uh, Barbara Matthews Mutilates a Certain Individual, uh, so all kinds of crazy stuff. You got some letters, very similar to what we saw with Roland Banks, so some letters that'll likely give more into the story. Uh, lots of stuff here, so it looks like maybe a diary entry of some type and a possibly a letter. This one's actually quite a point, and there you go, there's the monster. So this is that weakness card we talked about, and this is where, again, you read this type of stuff, and this is where it's gonna tie that card into the game. So you're really actually connecting with uh, the card that shows up later on as a weakness if you choose to use it in your game, which I love. I think that's so cool, because it's going to, uh, I don't know, I just love that connection of being able to read a story. I've said this a few times during this, and I can't get over it, I just love that. Last but not least is Carolyn Fern with To Fight the Black Wind, a very, very cool looking book. The artwork on this one's really, really crazy. Um, I really like this one. Again, i got your classic exclusive cards that are coming inside of it. This one was written by Jennifer Brozik, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So we're going to go ahead and crack into this. I will be reading the back of the book to show you guys more about that in a second once I get the glare taken care of from the wrap. Because I don't want you guys or your eyes to hurt from having to see the light ricocheting into your eyes, which is never fun. Okay, just tearing off the packaging wrap off camera here. We'll get through this real quick, and do, do, do. there we go. Seal has been broken, and there is the book. Looking very cool. I'll give you guys a nice little rundown of the, uh, the art on the front so you can actually see it. Pretty awesome, looks great. Gonna fit in real nicely with the other ones. Uh, the back says, not all patients can be cured or want to be. Interesting. Uh, so Carolyn Ferns is the newest patient. Uh, her newest patient is uh, Josephine Ruggles, if I'm saying it correctly, and uh, an heiress uh, whose nightmares leave uh, glyph-shaped wounds across her back. That sounds terrible. Uh, Miss Ruggles' case is unusual, even for the institution like Arkham Sanatorium. Uh, her case takes an even stranger turn after she claims to have met uh, Malachi, Carolyn's former patient whose treatment was cut short when he was brutally murdered in her dreams. Wow. When Carolyn uses uh, hypnotherapy to address uh, Josephine's trauma, they find themselves both journeying to a strange place. Josephine calls the Dreamlands. Ah, we're familiar with that from many different Arkham Horror uh, uh, card games and board games. Together, Carolyn and Josephine discover that the mind is a powerful tool, but knowledge is dangerous, and what is learned cannot be unlearned, and not everyone is prepared to pay the price. So that is your opening into To Fight the Black Wind. So let's go ahead and crack the back of the book here. Take a look at the exclusive cards that come inside of this and the alternative art. Again, they do typically seem to follow what's on the cover art as well. So, uh, but it is really cool to be able to be able to build a character that hasn't. See, that's the thing too is that I'm a. Uh, I'm not totally fully caught up to Arkham Horror the card game in terms of what's released recently. So some of these characters in the books. Uh, that are being released are or are coming and stuff like that. So the cool thing is, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you happen to get the character card as well as the where well, you're getting these inside the book, you can start building decks for these people right off the bat, which I think is awesome. Uh, so that's kind of a bonus with the books as well. So there's the alternative art for her. She looks awesome. Very, very cool. Flip it over. You got the grayscale version of the inactive for the game. Uh, right here, to fight the black wind is the typical preview card telling you kind of how to... Uh, go about the cards you're about to see, but we might as well show you them because that's way more fun. So here's Carolyn Fern's cards and the stats for Carolyn Fern. Let's make sure we get some focus there. And there she is, her stats. Let's flip this over and we got her deck building information for her. She's a psychologist. Some nice flavor text there. All right, so what do we got? We got uh, Foolishness, a Foolish Cat of Ulthar, if I'm saying that correctly. Two wilds, that's really powerful. It's a four uh, asset, ally creature, dreamlands. Kill and firm deck only, replacement. Foolishness enters play with three horror on him. Horror on him may be healed as if it were on Carolyn Fern. 
While Foolishness has no horror on him, you get plus one to all skills. Wow. Will we need to save you again? Foolishness flicked his tail back and forth, perhaps. Perhaps I'll do the saving. Interesting. So it looks like it's a pretty cool allied creature. That is definitely a weird looking individual. Certainly a little backwards. I can't, yeah, that's weird. Okay, so that's a very interesting card. And the next one here is called Treachery. This is something that's going to pop up for her uh, for a task in the Dreamlands. Carolyn Ferndeck only replacement. It's a revelation attached to fight uh, the Black Wind to the current. Attached to fight the Black Wind, or attach this card essentially is what it's saying, to the current agenda. And Carolyn Fern takes one direct horror force at the end of the round. And if any amount of horror was assigned to an investigator this round, and it was not healed, place one doom. Oh, so that's really pushing forward the agenda quickly if you're not staying on top of that. That's really cool. So there you go. There's some more exclusive cards that come in that particular set. Those are the novels, but first off, we'll just take, or last, I should say, we'll take a look through the actual book itself. So here is the book opening. Uh, Psychologists, again, it's following the same format as the prior books. And uh, once I get past this page, there we go. Starts off with Welcome to Arkham as per normal. And uh, we did skip past the title page, which is in here as well. There we go. And of course, the book's probably going to run about 90 pages. It seems to be the average for these ones. So we'll see where that lands to be sure. And it lands at, oh, this one's actually 108. Surprising. So this one's actually one of the longer ones so far. Um, and does have some... Uh, does have some uh, nice stuff in the back to look at. So historic finds, or historic find in Essex Falls, or Essex Falls. Uh, and you've got some nice reading there. Again, tying in the treachery card, of course, because that's uh, thematic. There we go. There's our crazy weird cat thing that somehow looks like its neck is bent in the wrong position and everything's weird with it. It's called foolishness, I guess. We're gonna have to find out what that's all about. Maybe it's something they're uh, that uh, she's seeing, that nobody else is seeing. I'm not too sure. Miskatonic University Rare Book Room Dedication Ceremony. Ooh. Interesting. Very interesting. So, and again, as I talked to you guys earlier, there is the Arkham Horror, invest the Investigators, I'm, I'm sorry, of Arkham book, which I highly recommend giving you lots of short stories for every single investor in the game, if you do not want to read, you know, full books on them. So, that's basically it. That's going to cover actually everything that Fantasy Flight Games has released for Arkham Horror uh, novels to this point. However, they do have a new one for Silas coming out. It is currently on pre-order and will likely be delivered soon. Uh, once I get the next three or four, I'll do another feature product. We'll crack into a bunch of them again. Hopefully this was useful in showing you what kind of things you can expect to get inside of each of the books. If they interest you, definitely check out your local game store and or pick them up. You can find them online as well. Thank you so much for your support, and as always, keep on rolling solo. Yeah.